Hi everyone, it's Todd Knock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So I thought I would try doing a another digital art instruction video. I'll at least share some tips and tricks while I draw. So let's just jump right into it. So today I'm drawing the Hulk. Just so we could uh, draw a big, massive, muscly character here. So I'm going to just start to rough in a, a pose here for the Hulk. I kind of want to have him lumbering forward lumbering towards us. So I'm using just a, a pencil here, just regular digital pencil, just about anything will do, I think, when it comes to digital pencils, at least, just your average pencil. And I'm using a, an 80 point nib here. And um, I'm, like, I'm using red here just to get my general structure down. No real major reason for the red, I just kind of just like the way it looks. And I'm just going to start to rough this in. Actually, it's a little big here, so I want to make them a little smaller and make sure I can fit all the arms and legs in appropriately. That's the nice thing about drawing digital is if you realize something's too big or too small on the page, you can you can select, resize, and replace things, which really makes great things that makes uh, digital great for when I'm doing my comic book layouts. When I'm able to do my layouts digitally, it leaves me so many options. Um, I, can, I can make adjustments uh, from panel to panel and slide things around to make it fit on the board uh, in so many more ways that uh, saves me from having to erase and redraw so in, in hopes that I could, might be able to recapture that magic. It's already, it's already there. If I'm happy with how things fit together the first time, which is occasional, sometimes I have to do have to erase and redraw, and that's okay too. But sometimes, you know, if I get that uh, sweet shot of Spidey laid out, but he's in the wrong place, it's it's not as desirable to have to to uh, erase and then redraw it in there because um, I might not capture that same spark I put down the first time. I do need to. Make this a little smaller. Now that I started to get the leg in there, I'm realizing at least I need to move him up a little bit. We'll make him a little bit smaller just in case because I can always enlarge him to fill up the space after I get the, um, the pose drawn in. So he's kind of hunched over because he's, like I said, lumbering towards us. So we have the foreshortening of the leg coming forward. Uh, the thigh coming towards us to the knee, and then the, the 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 shin and calves come down and kind of angle back a little bit to his feet. Well, I've got the the shoulders at a tilt here, so we have one on, one shoulder coming forward. So the, this, uh, since I have his left leg coming forward, his right arm would come forward. This is called contrapposto. The opposite limb, opposite the uh, arms and legs are opposite of each other. There's more power there in in the in the stance if you have opposite arm and leg working together. If it's this, if I had this arm coming forward, the this arm and this leg coming forward at the same time, it would not be as powerful. You want to have opposites if you want a bit more power in your pose. Because that's kind of how we walk and run naturally. If you notice when you walk and you swing your arms, your, your opposite arm and leg are in conjunction with each other. All right, and so we have some foreshortening because, like I said, we have him kind of hunched down, so his, his torso is going back that way. We have the shoulders angled that way. So it's kind of hard to see, but his hips are angled this way. So it's, uh, if we were to break these down into block shapes, it's kind of like this. Roughly, roughly. And then the other leg. This here, boop. I'll leave my directional lines for the moment. 
or the spack leg. So we have the the thigh coming down like this. It's going backwards. So we have the knee right there, and then the calf is moving even further back. So we see less of it, where we can't almost really see much of his shin down to his foot. Ankles in there. Now this is just a rough, very rough sketch here. Hmm. Looks like I want to make me. This is the, the thing about drawing a big, massive character is sometimes they get so big and massive, depending on the pose, that you run out of space. So, again, the working digitally is helping me out here in finding how much space I truly need to draw the Hulk. Okay, so we do need to get rid of this arrow here. You're in my way. So we have his shoulder, his bi uh, tricep, bicep there, down to his forearm. The forearm's kind of coming towards us a little bit. A little foreshortening with his hand. This hand's going to be a little more open. All right, so now I got the basics here, my basic shapes. I can go through here and just double check everything. So we have a lot of foreshortening with the body here. The body is really working, like I said, working its way backwards. So the head back that way. I want to make sure his ankles are nice and thick, tree trunk-like ankles. Have that fist, got that forearm. So, so we have the forearm foreshortening here. So now we're just gonna transparent pencil here. Just kind of sculpt in a little bit more of the the lines that I want to keep. Broaden out the pectoral muscles here a little bit. Let me see, we have his abs going right back there. All right, so we'll just leave them at this size for now. Oh, and this is a 9 by 12 uh, canvas that I'm working on, if I didn't mention that before. So after I do my sketch stage here, I lock. If you look over here, the opacity or the lock transparent pixels. So it's just going to lock it to where the only thing I can now draw on this. This layer here, the sketch layer, is only over the red. So you see I take the blue and I'm scribbling over the entire canvas. It's only showing the blue over the red. So I can go find fill bucket, fill it all in that non-repro blue, which I often like to work on. Um, so I'm going to lighten that up, create another layer, go back to my red because I enjoy working with the red. I'm going to power this down to a 40. I'm going to start to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in here and start to block out more of these shapes. Kind of pick my my next level of shapes. The head. Got his clavicle here. Neck muscles. It's not my finished type pencils yet. Just making the shapes a little more defined. For me to see. I also make edits as I go if needed. Start to put in. So I can start to just to. It makes it a little easier to see what I'm going to be penciling. 
for some tighter, cleaner pencils. Because that first sketch stage is quite scratchy, quite scribbly. Just work my way from shape to shape. Now, I practice these shapes a lot, a lot, a lot over the course of my life as well as my career. So this is why, why we practice over and over and over again. You do it so much, it becomes second nature. Just ingrained. Not to say I still don't encounter challenges or trying to figure out how to fit together a certain muscle grouping or foreshortening of a pose, but it does get a little bit easier with continued, continued practice because your brain is just gonna hopefully remember what you did last time and you're used to the shapes because you've drawn them over and over and over again. Kind of like with writing, you know, you know how to make a letter A, a letter B, a letter C because you've practiced them over and over and over again. But when you write, you, you know how to make the letters to make the words. This is kind of like that. I know these shapes, though it's like instead of a 26 letter alphabet, I have an almost infinite letter alphabet of, of shapes here that I can work with and play with. So I know the, I know many of the rules of the shapes. Not to say I know them all, it's not to say I, I don't tweak them sometimes, but I have, have enough to kind of do some something like this. I know, I remember enough to do something like this. Now over here, the hand, we're going to have the hand open. Get the forearm going. Calf muscles there. Let's go in there and kind of see if we can break down the face a little bit more. I'm going to I was using a 40. I'm going to power down to a 20 here. And get better detail in the face. Better shapes. Say, start to structure out that head a little bit better. Now, oftentimes when I'm drawing, if you've seen my previous videos, I talk about breaking down the face as the eye line, or just halfway from the top of the head to the chin. The nose line is often halfway from the eye line to the chin, and the mouth is halfway from the nose line to the chin. But with the Hulk's features, the nose is very short. Plus, it's, it's less than halfway um, from the eye line to the chin. Start to rough in the hair. We'll do a very classic Hulk here. Messy hair Hulk. He's often messy hair, but there have been times where the Hulk has had some that are grooming, like when he was Professor Hulk, you know, Smart Hulk in the 90s. Tempted to draw Smart Hulk. And he's got this big wide mouth, grimace. Very, doesn't have a lot of chin left. He doesn't have like a big lantern kind of jaw or chin. Still wide jawed, but the mouth really comes down low. Okay, so we can close out my, my blue layer. Now we have my red layer here. 
from here, I can lighten that up. What do I want? About 38% seems fine. Now let's come in here and let's start to render in pencil. I'm going to switch to blue. See, I'm going to keep it at about a 20. Maybe we'll get down to 7 by 17 point pencil. Let's start to put in the details. Actually, I want to go down to a 15 here. Drawing this piece at 300 dpi, 300 dots per inch. So I'm just going to create kind of, like, since I know where the top of his head is, as you can see the red lines there, and I know where his hairline would be, which is about halfway from the top of the head to the eye line, where the hairline starts, I kind of know where to, where the, the roots of the hair are going to be. And I can create my shapes based on that. So we have enough hair on the top of his head that shows that there's a, a, a skull underneath. That can be a big problem when we're first starting to learn to draw hair is sometimes we just draw a face and then we just start to put hair on top and it's like, whoa, there's not enough. The skull would be way up here, but the hair, the top of the hair is here. So it looks like they have no skull. So you don't want that to happen. You, you want to be very careful to know where your skull is. It'll help make your, your figures, faces, your heads look better. Don't skimp on the skull. Now we're down to a 12 here for some tighter, tight, tighter detail here in the canals of the ear. We'll just stay with a 12 for now. Zoom in even closer here for the face. It has to have small eyes, borderline beady eyes. Furrow at the brow. Kind of wide nostrils, but short nose. down the cheek, have that pull from the, the nostrils, a wide gap from his nose to his mouth, now we're down to a 10 here for a little more detail. Well, at least it's Tighter, tinier details. Chin here.
like to switch to the transparent color. As you can see over here on the left, a little checker right there, that's showing transparent, so it's not a color. But I like to use transparent instead of an eraser because I'm still using the brush or the the yeah the brush that I'm using, the pencil tool, but it's, it's drawing in clear, so it's like an eraser. I don't like to use the actual eraser uh, when I'm doing some cleanups here to the, the shapes or the lines because I want it to still have that pencil sort of vibe. So I don't want to lose the, the softness of the pencil, the pencil line. Uh, an eraser, switching to black, back to black, uh, an eraser would be a bit harder. It's good for when I just want to wipe something out completely. So if I just want to do some pencil sculpting here, um, just some cleanups, then I'll, I'll go to my clear and use it as if it were an eraser. It helps me maintain the kind of the, the, the flavor of the line that I'm working with. Just my personal preference. I'll switch from back and forth from black to clear as I pencil or ink. Today's video will probably just be the pencil here. I'm recording this commentary live as I draw even though this is an uploaded video. Hope to get back to live streaming here real soon. Work on these eyes here a little bit more. So something I like to do is select Tool over here on the right, check both the pencil and sketch layer, go to edit, go to transform, go to flip, go to flip horizontal. And I can check on to see how everything is lining up. As you can see here, got the jawline's a bit wonky. So I can clean this up some. I can make some tweaks. That's a great thing about digital as well. That will afford to me this option here. Make sure things are lining up. It's a very nice tool. Take advantage of here digital. Also check to make sure the eyes are lined up and the ears are lined up correctly. Make sure spacing is accurate. Just the nose, just a smidge. Using that clear color again to do my color sculpting or my pencil sculpting instead of erasing. I just call it pencil sculpting. I don't just a where am I? I just say for myself there, I, it's not an official term. Zoom in here, let's just look at the eyes. I'm going to go to zero 08 here. Get these uh, irises and pupils penciled in. All right, let's flip everything back. So both are still selected. Edit. Go down to transform. Go over to flip horizontal. Boom. Hit enter. Now we're back. Uh, put some darks in his hair. So I'm going to have like this uh, 
center part be kind of dark. And then the fringe, dark. What I'm doing is creating this highlight ring through his hair. And then I can fill in dark. That'll probably be a green highlight, of course, because his hair is a very dark shade of green. A blackish green. So I'll put a pen here. Go through here and just fill in the black. Always keeping in mind the direction and flow of the hair. I try to make my lines go in the direction and flow of the hair as much as possible. It just keeps the hair kind of flowing in a as natural of a way as possible. At least the intention I try to have. I mean, I could just go through here and shade like this and like this and like this, but it doesn't really um, doesn't really help me convey the 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 texture and flow of the hair. It's not just filling it in black, but it's also creating that that that. Yeah, I guess texture and flow is the best are the best words I can use for this. So think the directionality of your hair. And then as it gets closer to the center here, we can just let that fill in a little bit darker. So we got some dark. Mop, mop top, floppy, floppy hair for Hulk. All right, let's power back up to a 12 here, and let's start putting in his body, actually. Let's go 15, because we've got some big, big lines here to drop in. Got the muscle striations here. From his neck, we have the main neck muscle here that runs from the ear down to the center of the clavicle. Same on this side. We got those little bones right there, the collarbone. A shadow under his chin there. And um, then we have the shoulder muscles here, that one really big one. And then you can put in those little muscly, tendony, veiny sort of striations there. And we have his shoulder muscles and his pectoral muscles we're going to work on now a little bit. That one shoulder muscle that kind of connects right there and kind of to his back. Muscles here like this. Connecting to his shoulder. And 
bicep. And we're connecting like that. A little bit of a vein that runs down the center there. And the forearm muscle kind of fits together like that. Elbow. And the other side of the forearm right there. And when I keep it in mind, I'm always thinking about not just the muscles, but how big the muscles should be. What is the Hulk size? I always try to keep in mind that all our different heroes, superheroes, are different sizes. Um, like, uh, the Hulk is bigger than Thor, but Thor is bigger than Captain America. But Captain America is bigger than Spider-Man. And so you have to keep in mind how tall and how, how massive are the characters. I would not draw Captain America at this size, or with muscles this big, ideally. Um, I always want to try to figure... Figure... Uh, Figure out what are the size relations between the characters, so that Captain America doesn't come across looking like a, you know, eight foot giant. So, a nice thing about this is, uh, you know, if you're not sure. How big a character is in relation to another one you can look in the comics you know just do a search for the two characters that you have to draw you know i use google quite a bit for reference for the characters i have to draw if i'm not familiar with them especially but sometimes if i need to know specific specifics about the character like eye color i'm always searching what what is mary jane's eye color what is bruce banner's eye color you know things like that uh -huh. some characters i just know Peter Parker has brown eyes. Captain America has blue eyes. Um, but so you can also look up, you know, how tall is a character? Because um, back in the 80s, Marvel did their uh, official handbook to the Marvel Universe. which was just kind of like this uh, big kind of, uh, well, handbook to all the characters of the Marvel Universe. And it would have not just their, their powers and abilities and... Uh, first appearance issue, origin issue, things like that, but also stats like how tall they are, how, how much they weigh, eye color, hair color, etc. Known relatives, other aliases. So um, so I'll, I'll utilize that, and a lot of that's online now, if not all of it's online, um, on different fan sites, and you can, you can look up, you know, you can look up how tall is the Hulk. So that you can know, and of course, you need to know which version of the Hulk you're drawing. Because he has varied in size and shape and color over the 50 some odd years he's been around. He was created well before I was born, so I, uh, I'm old, but I'm not that old. Pinky finish now. Putting some wrinkles at the joints of the uh, thumb there. Powered down to a 10. 
for some finer detail. Right, that takes care of pretty much one arm there on the on the right, his right arm. Let's go back to the 15. Let's work on this other shoulder slash arm. Well, muscle runs over to the bicep. Now this forearm here is going to have more foreshortening, so we're going to have to think in different ways here. Like, let's go ahead and work on this fist first because it's most in the foreground. I want to arc these knuckles in. I'm giving him very meaty fingers. Again, with know the character you're working with, you know. Um, Spider-Man would not have big meaty fingers like this. That would not look quite as 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 good, as nice, as believable if you gave if you gave Spidey Hulk like hands. His, his hand should be more spindly and, sp and spider-like. It plays to the character. For the Hulk, he needs those big, massive, shockwave clapping hands. You know when he does the big shockwave clap? I always liked that as a kid. They could just clap his hands and the, the force from the hands would like knock over a tank. It's like, that guy's strong. So let's see, I'm working on the forearm muscle here. Got that one major one that kind of overlaps on the top there. That one little bone that sticks out on the outside of our, our wrist. We can bring down and we have the elbow tucking right back here behind because the forearm is overlapping. We have the bicep because the fist is overlapping kind of tucks right in back behind. Get a little bit of that main vein that runs down the center. With these little cross hatching marks, I'm keeping in mind the, the the direction and flow of the muscle. They're not just thrown in every which way. They I want them to show the the shape and form of that muscle. That's what those. Are. I think that's from my experience, my opinion, the best way to utilize cross-hatching is to show the form. I think that would probably be 
what any artist would say. Um, so something to keep in mind is what is the shape and form of what you're drawing? Like the cross hatching. Let the cross hatching uh, convey that. Don't, just don't do this. Because then it looks like he's he's all beat up. Now it's a very um, I don't know, I don't know what, what what word I was wanting to say this. Not the way I would go. Right, now let's start to work on his abs. And midsection here. Got different muscles here, like through the side. All this stuff kind of connects in a very unique way. So it's quite the puzzle, for sure. Studying photos can really help. Give you the learn those shapes. But we're moving away from, from the viewer here. Also make sure I don't make these abs too too thin. Like I feel like I may have. I think I may need to widen them out. So I'm gonna actually take the eraser tool here and I'm just gonna wipe these out. So I feel that the midsection is a little too thin and with a big, beefy, hulking character like the Hulk. But I'm just going to re take another stab at the midsection here. Again, I want to go into my red layer here. Or I just want to make some adjust adjustments, not adjustments, adjustments. Make sure I have got the width. Okay, I think that'll help me better. Now I go back to my black. to put in that midsection so it's come along pretty well here almost halfway done probably just over halfway done in his little uh, pants line here. We'll put him in his tattered purple pants. Bruce Banner was ever trying to hide the fact that he was the Hulk. He should have stopped buying purple pants. I mean, how many people own that many pair of purple pants? You'd think they would figure out who, who the Hulk was if they just looked for the guy buying all the purple pants. Of course, that was the 1960s, 1970s. I imagine purple pants were far more prevalent than we see nowadays. Some wrinkles here at the uh, where the thighs meet the groin area, pelvic area. So 
So use muscles, test the tensile strength of a pair of pants. There's got to be some form of elasticity in these pants. Keeping in mind the massiveness of his thighs into the knees. Knees have to be a very challenging thing to draw. I just like to think of kind of like this diamond shape in the center, kind of curves around it, and then the, got that inner thigh. We're going to have to figure out how the pants fit all around this here. We'll kind of start the pattern here at the calf. And we'll kind of tear a hole here at the knee. Put a little tear here in the thigh. Cloth overhanging here. So the zipper, the the fly, I should say. Running down the center. We have his work on his calves and shin. Down to the ankle, the inner ankle. There's the inner ankle over here and the outer ankle over here. The inner ankle is a little higher than the outer ankle. I don't know, can't tell you how many times while drawing, this is more so in the past, I've now since been able to memorize the outer ankle where the inner ankle is higher than the outer ankle, I would reach down and grab my ankle. I'd feel my ankles while drawing. It's like, wait a second, which one's higher, which one's lower? Oh yeah, inner is higher, outer is lower. I used to do that all the time. Reaching down, feeling my ankles. To know where is which one's set higher and which one is set lower. I just could not remember for years. But you know, the more I did it, the more I drew angles and was trying to be intentional with where to put my ankles. See here with these arrows. I want to do a Hulk drawing and people go, why are there little arrows pointing at his ankles? Okay, let's start to work on the toes. Toes, challenge to draw. Definitely takes study and practice here. You kind of stair step. In my life drawing classes at, at art school, we studied under Bern Hogarth, as I you probably heard me mention in other videos. He does a, I think does a great job of breaking down how how the foot and toes fit together. So if you're looking for a life drawing book, check out Dynamic Anatomy by Bern Hogarth. That was the one I was trained under. There's also Andrew Loomis and uh, George Bridgman as well, who are fantastic. Right, 
There's one foot. Just have one more leg to go. Got some more foreshortening. So this leg is going back. So the thigh is coming down here to the knee, which we see the knee at a different angle. So my approach to drawing the knee is a bit different than I did his, um, so that'd be right knee, just because this knee is, we're almost looking at it from the top, if you will. So this is, this is the kind of the, we're studying our anatomy. It's like we have to learn all the different angles as much as possible. Like I said, we don't have to always know everything. You know, sometimes we'll spend years reaching down, feeling our angles to remember which one is higher and which one is lower. Um, but the more we study, the better chance we have at kind of locking it in. And but sometimes I do have to look at photo reference to get the, the right shapes of the muscles or figure work. Uh, depending on the angle that I'm drawing. And so then we have the calf muscle going backwards. It's going away from us. So we only see so much of the, the calf. We'll tear out the knee of this side of the pants as well. Put a little uh, tear in the pants on the inner thigh here. by adding some more detail to the hands over here. And forearm. Sometimes coming in, coming into an area with a fresh eye, you see some things you might need to add or take away. And so now I'm going to draw this foot at a different angle than I did. His left foot's going to be a different angle than his right foot. So add a little shadow here um, on the shin. But the foot has moved away from us. So we have the inner side of the foot and then to the big toe. There's all sorts of different shapes of the toe. Sometimes that middle toe or that second toe is longer than the big toe. Sometimes it's not. Some, you know, there's like, I don't know what they, four or five, six different variations of toe lineup. So I don't know if there's any that have been established for any character, but um, you can just go with the one you feel you want to draw the most. And then we have the little, kind of the little striations that run from the, the foot down to the toes. The shadow there on that digit of the toe. Adding a little more shadow here to the un to the underside of this um, of this calf, the shin helps create that depth because it's moving further away from us. It's angled down in a way, so it's like away from the light source. So, um, so you can, that can help convey distance. up the vein ante here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make them a bit more veiny in general. What I can do is I'm just gonna create a separate layer here. I'm gonna take some green, a size 20 pencil here. Let's just lower the opacity a little bit. I'm gonna go size 30. And I'm gonna just kind of draw in the veins. I 
as a guide for myself. both arms, so you have the main vein right there. Some veins here on his shoulder muscles too. All right, so now that I know where these veins are, I can go back to my black layer, black pencil, twelve point um, tip. And I can kind of just outline these, these veins. I actually have this vein going up around the shoulder. One that runs from the pec down then the lines just kind of break up. It's a bit thicker. This one here is a bit thicker. Thicker width to the vein. Then we have some thinner veins. Just a kind of clear color here and just kind of erase out some of the pencil lines where the veins overlap. Let's get the main lines going here and then we'll try and take out the lines we don't want where the veins run over the muscle groupings. I'll switch to clear now and then do just that. Again, a nice trick of being able to do this digitally, very clean. Um, you can't do it if you're drawing traditionally um, with an eraser, provided you didn't pencil too darkly. It's okay if you did. Just might get a little, little bit of gray underneath the, you know, from the previous pencil lines, but that's okay. I'll just turn off the turn off the red layer for now and turn off the green layer. You can see the veins there. Um, oh, oh, see some spots I forgot to clean out. Start over here on this shoulder. And right over here. Let's add some of those veins to the shoulder muscle here. Add some hatching as I go. Got the, the big veins here. So I want to, or the arm veins, because I want to make this vein a little thicker. I'm just going to thin out the inside of it.
his bane all the way to the outside of his arm. Go ahead and do some cleanups in this portion. Not a lot. This uh, forearm. Got the veins crisscross. Cleanups. more veins. Didn't map it out, but we'll put one right there. Maybe on the back of the hands too. Really just three. Cleaned up where that vein would go. Got that green layer. Setting a little, a little darker underneath where the cloth would um, overlap the legs, creating a little bit of a shadow. Helps me create a little bit more depth. Just going through here and just kind of making some adjustments as I go. A little more furrow to that brow. A little more arc to the eyebrow.
Okay, and there are the pencils for the Incredible Hulk. Uh, next video will be uh, an ink video, and I'll probably do a color video as well. But that, those are tight pencils uh, for the Hulk. Now this is about as pen tight as I would pencil for if I was doing this for a comic book, uh, interiors or cover. Um, oftentimes I would print this out in blue line on artboard and ink it traditionally. Uh, but more than likely I will just ink this digitally um, will be the plan for the next video. At least that's why I think for now. We'll see what the future holds. Gang, thanks so much for tuning in and thanks for watching. Um, I hope you had a good time. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you like what you see, please leave me a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll see you again real soon. I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun.